everybody, it's your girl T. Let's talk Snowden. This is the latest from Oliver Stone, and the story is mostly told in flashback. Edward Snowden has already stolen the documents from the NSA and has fled to Hong Kong. He's already meeting with journalists to tell them his story. And the really interesting thing about this movie is it's sort of facing off against Sully this weekend, Sully being a carryover. And both of these movies focus on events that were relatively recent in our history. And I dare say the Edward Snowden story is ongoing. It's still a current event. The main difference here is with Sully, it's not really so much a controversial figure. Edward Snowden Snowden, on the other hand, is an extremely controversial figure. And I think that leaves a lot more to explore with his story in terms of whether he's a patriot or a traitor. Overall, I really quite like this movie. Oliver Stone takes a very clear stance and point of view within the film itself. You know, he definitely lets you know wh which side he falls on in that debate. And he takes a very measured step-by-step -step approach to explaining who Edward Snowden is and why he did what he did. In that sense, the film isn't exactly balanced. You know, it's definitely taking one specific point of view in terms of telling Edward Snowden's story and how it affects us as a, as a country and as a culture. But the point of filmmaking is not necessarily to be objective. This is a film, it's a movie, it's not a documentary. So being balanced is not the point of filmmaking. Still, this film focuses on a very complex series of events. The only thing is the way the film addresses it is not equally complex. Because it's a movie, there are moments that you can really tell that they really like Hollywooded it up, but I didn't really mind that so much because they have to make it entertaining. So in the interest of making it an engaging narrative, they sort of sacrifice things that might not be as true to life, might not be completely accurate to how they actually happened for the sake of the narrative. One example is the actual sort of heist in which Edward Snowden steals the documents from the NSA and the way it's done in the movie, it's not tacky at all. It's not like they've got like Ocean's Eleven music or anything, but it is definitely done in a way that might not necessarily reflect how it actually went down. The truth is, we probably will never know. But they were working with the cooperation of Edward Snowden to make this movie and actually at the screening that I was at, there was a live stream Q&A with Edward Snowden, Oliver Stone, and the cast of the film. And Edward Snowden himself said that there are a lot of parts of this movie that are close to the truth. Oliver Stone is no stranger to covering recent historic events. He even did a movie on a still seated president with W. So he's also no stranger to making ballsy choices. I think the main place where this film falls short is just making ballsy choices in the actual storytelling. You know, the subject matter is definitely brave, but I feel like he was very much like by the book here in telling the story. But that doesn't make it a bad movie. It just makes it not necessarily an Oliver Stone movie. If I had seen this movie and didn't know that it was directed by Oliver Stone, I I probably would never have known. Joseph Gordon-Levitt does a great job playing Ed Snowden. Uh, in the beginning, I was a little taken aback because he's definitely doing a voice in this movie. He's trying to approximate Edward Snowden's cadence and speech patterns, but you get over it pretty quickly. I got used to it right away and ultimately completely forgot that I was watching an actor and was very much engrossed in the movie. Shailene Woodley also does a great job in her part. I think the dimension they gave to her character is actually far more than she got in the press, and that actually helps to really round out Ed Snowden's character. Nick Cage is also in the movie and he is delightfully weird in the way that only Nick Cage can be. I'm not entirely sure that he knew he was in a movie. It also has Melissa Leo, Timothy Oliphant, and Zachary Quinto, so it's really got a stellar cast. There's also a role by Keith Stanfield who is an on the rise actor. He's in that new show Atlanta on FX, which is great, so he's also great in this. Overall, I would absolutely recommend this movie. I was kind of hearing mixed things prior to seeing it, but I really, really liked it. I do think that the filmmaking itself, just the actual storytelling, is a little bit by the book, or actually very much by the book, but the story itself is so compelling, it's still worth seeing. Let me know your thoughts on Snowden, if you're gonna see it this weekend, if you're gonna pass and maybe go see Sully again. And make sure you subscribe to Cinefix and check us out on Facebook because we are doing live Facebook broadcasts once or twice a week. So make sure you check us out on our social media so you don't miss them. Jade Gore stare right there.